Lagos Talks 91.3. President Mohamed Buhari will present the 2023 Appropriation Bill to a joint session of the Senate and House of Representatives before end of next month. This was disclosed yesterday by the Director General Budget Office of the Federation, Ben Akabwese in Abuja, during a trading on budget preparation using the Government Integrated Financial Management Information System, GIFMIS. Akabwese, who was represented by the Director Expenditure Socials in the Budget Office, Fabian Ogu, said the federal government under Buhari would ensure a consistent and timely preparation, submission and approval of annual budgets as part of its public financial management reforms. Meanwhile, the country's consumer price index, CBI, which measures the level of price change in goods and services, hit 19.64% in July 2022 from the 18.60% recorded in the last month. According to the CBI report for July 2022, released by the National Bureau of Statistics yesterday, this means a 1.82% month-on-month hike. According to the NBS report, the country's urban inflation increased by 2.08% to 20.09% in July 2022 from 18.01% in July 2021. The federal government has commenced the implementation of the White Paper on the Digital Switchover, which prohibits terrestrial pay TVs from self-carriage of their signals. The Minister of Information and Culture, al Haji Lai Mohammed, disclosed this on Monday in Abuja at the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between Integrated Television Services and NTA Star, where he assured that the MOU would open the floodgate for channels to be licensed by the National Broadcasting Commission, the NBC, thereby creating jobs and enhancing quality television experience with compelling content. The ITS is one of the two federal government's licensed signal distributors in the DSO project, transition from analog to digital television broadcasting. The other is Pinnacle Communications Limited. The terrestrial pay TVs to be affected by the Ember Go are Star Times and Go TV, while the analog terrestrial stations like Channels, NTA, AIT, TVC and stations owned by states will also be wholly content providers. Notorious Taraba-based King kidnap kingpin Hamisu Bala, known as Wadume, has been sentenced to seven years in prison without an option of fine. In the trial that lasted three years, Wadume was convicted on counts 2 and 10 of the 13 counts brought against him and six others by the Attorney General of the Federation, bordering on escaping from lawful custody and unlawfully dealing in prohibited firearms. The presiding judge, Justice Binta Inyako, delivered the judgment on July 22, what was just obtained by by newsmen. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, is scheduled to meet with federal government representatives today, Tuesday, over its prolonged strike action. Its president, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, said the meeting was to discuss one of seven issues ASU is protesting over, which is the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. According to him, issue of IPPIS and UTAS has been put to rest and the issues now has to do with the system, funding, the structure, the autonomy and how to fund universities. Professor Osodeke further suggested that if Tuesday's meeting goes well, the strike action, which had been on since February 14, may be called off. The Ashun State Independent Electoral Commission has announced October 15, 2022 for local government elections across Ashun State. The chairman of the commission, Otumba Olusegmo Ladunton, while addressing a press conference in Oshegbo yesterday, said all the inhibiting factors and circumstances against the conduct of the elections have been perfected. Oladunton said while all previous laws on local government elections in the state had been repealed and the Ashun State Electoral Law 2022 has been enacted, and signed by Governor Adigwe Gaoyetola, the coast is now clear for the exercise. While soliciting the support of the Ashun electorate, Oladun Tan gave assurance that the commission will act without fear or favor. 
The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Lagos State says it has displayed the register of newly registered voters for claims and objections from members of the public. Its resident electoral commissioner in the state, Mr. Lushe Gwagbaje, who disclosed this on Monday, said this display in line with Section 19 of the Electoral Act 2022 will be on from Monday, August 15 to Friday, August 20 at the 20 local government area offices of the commission in Lagos State. He urged all registered voters in the state to check through for any omission, correction and objection to any information on the register during the period. The timely intervention of the police command in Lagos may have saved 29-year-old man Sani Gafar from mob justice. The command spokesman, SP Benjamin Hudayi, who confirmed the incident which occurred at Ijora Badia area of Lagos at 11 a.m. on Monday, said the mob descended on Gafar, who they suspected to be a terrorist in disguise. He said that his suspect, who claims that he's an electrician, was allegedly dressed as a woman and was found with a bag containing three hammers, six screwdrivers, one pair of pliers, one chisel, among other work tools. Hudayi, however, said that the Commissioner of Police in Lagos, C.P. Abiodun Alabi, commended the residents of Lagos for their vigilance, which led to the arrest of the suspect. Still in Lagos, the State Public Works Corporation has carried out maintenance work on sections of the third mainland bridge as part of its ongoing statewide road maintenance and rehabilitation operations. Speaking during the work inspection, the corporation's general manager, Engineer Latif Shomide, noted that though maintenance of the bridge is under the purview of the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, the Lagos State Government decided to provide the one-off intervention on critical sections which are not only showing slowing down traffic but also leads to accidents in some cases. The general manager assured road users in parts of Lagos yet to be visited by his team of engineers that it would soon be their turn. Konga Kiers, the CSR arm of Konga, Nigeria's leading e-commerce giant in partnership with MedDirect Community Pharmacy, has commenced free delivery of highly subsidized quality medicines to Nigerians at their preferred locations effective from yesterday, Monday, August 15, 2022. According to Konga Cares, patients on managed health conditions can enjoy 12% discounts on routine prescription drugs for diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, asthma and arthritis, among others. Also, a 10% discount is available for regular medicines or supplements for people who wish to enhance their health, lifestyle and beauty goals. An additional 2% discount is also available for retired and seven civil servants, servicemen and women, lecturers, teachers and those above 60. The subsidized medicines are available for purchase on conga.com. You're still listening to the world news. Moving on to the foreign scene, Deputy President William Ruto has been declared the winner of Kenya's presidential election amid dramatic scenes. The 55-year-old Ruto narrowly beat his rival, Ralia Odinga, taking 50.5% of the vote according to the official results. Ralia Odinga, the 77-year-old former prime minister, got 48.8% of the vote. The announcement was delayed amidst scuffles and allegations of vote region by Mr. Odinga's campaign. Four of the seven members of the Electoral Commission refused to endorse the result, saying it was opaque. The Electoral Commission chairman, Wafula Chebukati, however said he had done his duty despite receiving threats. German households will have to pay hundreds of pounds more a year for gas under a levy to help energy companies cover the cost of replacing Russian supplies. The government said the move was necessary to prevent the collapse of the German energy market. Before the Ukraine war, Germany imported more than half its gas from Russia. Ministers have promised a levy, which will be imposed from 1st of October and remain in place until April 2024 and it will be accompanied by additional support for households. Gas prices have soared since the invasion of Ukraine as Western countries imposed sanctions and pledged to phase out Russian imports. In business news this morning, the Nigerian exchange has received approval for a regulatory framework for operation of a new trading window for fixed income securities, paving the way for the launch of the new platform. 
Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, Nigeria's Apex Capital Market Regulator, has approved NGX guidelines on trade execution through NGX on manual negotiated deal trading window, NEG deal window. The NEG deal window is a trading channel for executing negotiated fixed income deals during trading hours. The next deal window complements other executions via the central order book and shall be used only for permissible volume of fixed income securities on bilateral pre-agreed terms. Trades executed via the neck deal window will be recognized for price setting purposes and reflect in the NGX trading statistics. And finally, to sport news, President of the Nigerian Football Federation, the NFF, Amaju Pinnick, has clarified that he would not be running for a third term after his tenure expires this year. Pinnick, who was elected in 2014, will end his tenure next month. The former Delta State Football Association president, who is also a member of the FIFA Executive Council Committee, has been rumored to be interested in continuing his stay in office. In an interview chat with Arise TV, as monitored from our studios, the former CAF vice president stated that he will only be in a position to intervene and not interfere during the process of electing a new NFF president. Chelsea manager Thomas Tuchel is being investigated by the English FA for his comments about referee Anthony Taylor following a London derby draw on Sunday. Chelsea were dramatically held to a 2-2 draw with Tottenham Hotspur at Stamford Bridge on Sunday, a result which sparked serious controversy at full time with both club managers Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte engaging in a heated exchange during and after the game and in each a touchline ban after receiving red cards. Tuchel was also seemingly furious with the level of officiating from referee Anthony Taylor, suggesting that Taylor often gets decisions wrong against his side and alleging that there, were, there might be an agenda against his side in the match following the build-up to both of Tottenham's goals. Liverpool's Premier League mission to take the title back from Manchester City suffered another setback last night. After a 2-2 draw at Craven Cottage in the season opener against Fulham last weekend, Liverpool expected to bounce back to winning ways in front of their home fans but met a stubborn Palace side which forced a 1-1 draw. Coach Jurgen Klopp's side also played the final 23 minutes of the game with 10 men after 100 million Pound summer signing Nunes was sent off for headbutting an opposition player. Liverpool remains winless and seat 12th on the table, while Palace is four spots below the Reds on one point. Lagos Talks 91.3.